Did you know that 82% of workers would leave their job due to bad management? And that about one out of every two workers at some point in their career has left their job because of bad workplace leadership? I think these numbers are ridiculously high, but I also think they're pretty accurate too. I think it's well past time that we re-examine workplace leadership, and these are my strategies and tips that you can use today to become a more mindful leader. Keeping everything simple, let's jump right in. So obviously we've had a huge shift in the workplace landscape. With the introduction of technology, there's been a huge shift in how businesses operate and they're run. And leadership is no stranger to this because the way that we need to lead has also shifted dramatically from when management and leadership was first introduced into the professional environment. With a shift in technology and the business landscape, mindful and meaningful leadership is something that a lot of jobs these days lack. I'm sure all of us have that experience with one good boss versus one bad boss. I know I personally am no stranger to this. Workers today want transparency, authenticity, understanding, and respect. Any business that does not value its employees is probably on a downward spiral in my opinion. No business, no organization can run without the people behind it. If you looked at like Amazon, what would happen if every single Amazon worker from the warehouse to corporate, they all just stopped what they were doing and just left? Amazon wouldn't survive. And that's something that we have to keep in mind when we are looking to be leaders in our workplaces. So my first strategy is to be honest with yourself and honest with your team. If you struggle or you can't be honest and transparent with your team, then you're gonna have a harder time creating meaningful connections with them and building a positive working relationship. And of course, there's obviously rules and policies that we all have to follow in terms of the flow of information, but do what you can and be as transparent as you can in any given situation, and they will respond in kind. It's kind of like Mushu. My eyes can see straight through your armor. And this honesty extends to performance as well. Not just there, but your own performance. Be honest about it. And then honesty on if you don't know something, that you're gonna go out of your way to learn it, so that way you can actively give them an answer with confidence. Honesty is key, and it will help you build a better connection with your team. Next strategy is a reminder that mindfulness is all about self-awareness. And so you have to improve your ability to be self-aware because if you are leading from within, you can be more authentic with your team. It's understanding your emotions, regulating your thoughts, being able to control it when it needs to be controlled because nothing, nothing is worse than losing your composure, losing your temper with a customer, a team member, the team as a whole. I can guarantee you they will remember the situation. However, the thing that they will remember the most is how you presented yourself during that. So for those of you out there, comment below what's been some of your favorite leadership stories as well as your leadership horror stories. Because I know we all have so much to share on this topic because leadership determines so much of what we do. Then we have the awareness of the values, the strengths, and the weaknesses that we bring to the team. Going back to honesty, we have to be honest with ourselves on what do we do well and what do we do poorly. And being able to relay that to our team so that way they know possibly areas that we lack in, but also what we're gonna do to make sure we can improve that so we are continuing to improve and grow alongside them. And as you go throughout your career, your self-awareness will grow and develop alongside you. Whether you're leading a team of two people or you're leading a team of a couple dozen people, your ability to be self-aware is gonna continue to improve as you continue to grow and go throughout different chapters and get a better understanding of who you are and what you're gonna do. The next tip is to be genuine and connecting with your team. Get to know them, ask them questions. Nothing's more annoying than having a manager or a leader that you feel you can never approach. Ask them about their favorite music. Ask them if they're a Marvel vs. DC fan or if they like both of them. Ask them about their favorite movie, their favorite anime, their favorite trip. Ask them these things, connect with them, and get to know them. As you build that relationship with them, don't be afraid to ask a deeper question. Ask them, what's a goal? What's a dream they have? How can you support their aspirations? And then continuing on, don't be afraid to have a deep connection with your team. As their leader, it's your job to help develop them. And this is something that is beyond just working in one role, one company their whole life. It's your job to help develop them as a professional and as an individual. So lead them openly and authentically. And leaders in the workplace or on projects aren't some mysterious figure. 
you guys are human too. So don't forget that. Strategy number four is to prepare for the hard days so you can approach your team with optimism. I cannot stress this enough. Optimism is not naive, and optimism is not a lack of understanding. If you saw my last video, you'll know that for me, optimism is about accepting the lows and the pitfalls of life, but then believing and trusting that things will always get better in the end. If you're having a bad day, that's okay. Again, you're human too. If by chance you're not human, feel free to send me a message, I have questions. But if you are human, level with your team be honest with them let them know that it is a hard day or maybe it's a hard week because of expectations or project deadlines that you have if you're up front with them they can be up front with you and remember for every rough day and every heavy week there's always going to be a day that's so fun that it doesn't even feel like work or a week where you're so far ahead of schedule that you can celebrate early remember to look to your team just as much as they look to you Strategy number five is understand your purpose and understand your why. I mean, sure, asking yourself, why do I want to be a leader is a simple question, but that can be a really heavy answer. The thing about having a mission or a purpose is that your team and others will respond to it. And it can be something as simple as, I want to make a more inclusive workplace. I want to foster more communication or even something as generic as, I want to at least make this place an area that people want to come to work to and actually enjoy coming to work. I think we all know the stories of someone who happens to call up just, Hey boss, I won't be able to come in today. I, <coughs> I'm, I'm sick. Well, all right. Looks like your other 45 projects are going to have to go to someone else. <coughs> oh, um, actually I'm dying. <laughs> to be a mindful leader, you have to understand your why and your why is subject to change and i don't want you to freak out about that especially knowing that if you are a leader at 20 years old your skills and abilities and your purpose and your goals may be different than when you are say 25 or 30 and that's okay it's expected but the best thing that you can do is continue to understand continue to ask yourself why am i doing this what's driving me and what is making me want to lead and develop people and honestly, the best thing that you can do is learn to find it continuously. And it's because it's gonna grow, because it's gonna change, get comfortable asking yourself why. In the workplace today, we definitely need mindful leaders. And I don't just mean those who hold the title or got that job. I also mean those who have that temporary position or those who are still a guiding force in the team as a whole, who may not be promoted to the leadership level. As humans, as teams, we thrive on authentic connections. And so it's no surprise that if a leader becomes disconnected from the very people they are supposed to be supporting and developing, of course they're gonna wanna leave. Like, I can't imagine. Hey, Gary, I need you to come help me out with this. Uh, my name's Sam. Sure, whatever you said, Alex, come on. Like, that would just suck. So I encourage you. If you're in a leadership position in your company, in your profession, in your field, if you are preparing to take one on, or if you are maybe holding an honorary spot, be mindful. Work to understand yourself. Be honest with your team. Approach everything you can, the best you can with optimism, and be authentic continually. And don't forget, you're human too. So go make some connections. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that like button so YouTube can recommend this video to others like you. Follow me on Instagram at KES Studios, and I will see y'all in another video.